Fibertech. Now, obviously, I can't go mention any of the names that you mentioned previously. Maybe you can. I'm I not can't. going to. But what we've got here is fibre reinforced paste have been around for many, many years, and you're probably using one of the maybe the one of the two or three most common that people would come across. Yeah. Um, they're fantastic for what they do. They've been around for a long time, but in that time, technology has changed a lot. Mm. Our product, fibre reinforced filler, <coughs> Fibertech. What we've done with this is, it is latest generation, we've removed some of the glass content, we've then replaced it with, with latest generation Kevlar. Fuck. So what you get in there is a, a, an increase or maintaining the strength but using a different shorter strand of glass to reinforce the paste. It's like the F1 of paste. Absolutely. Oh, right. yeah, there you go. It is top of the shot. Ben, main thing with this product is no one really likes, apart from the likes of yourselves who do your silly <laughs> custom work, like to work with fibre paste. <laughs> Fiberglass is hard work. People don't like it. I don't think it makes you scratch, gives you the itch. It's not very easy. Are you sure to work you're talking with. about fiberglass? It's not, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's, not te- it's not the most friendly material to work No, it is not, especially if you get it. I'll like give you an fibers. example. Yeah, those, those of you who, or those out there that have worked with fiber reinforced paste will understand the hardest problem or the hardest obstacle to overcome is to get them out of the can in yes. the first place. <laughs> They're trying to get it out of the can, it's all in Yeah, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This stuff, obviously supplied in the bag. Like a lot of stuff from America. Being like, you know, you like your colours. So I love like my colours, man. purple this one is. Purple? Well, purple. That's, that's Corey's favourite colour. So, Corey's, here you go. Oh, here we Look at that, Corey's almost looks... Oh, that's okay. purple colour. Yeah, that, that doesn't... Okay. Right. <laughs> the jokes are there, people. So, Make yeah, their own. First of all, it's out the bag. No mess. No. That's, that's pretty Lid on sweet, nice man. and tight again. Once again, capping off the product, keeping it in as good a condition as you possibly can. Hardly any smell is what I'm noticing off of this as uh-huh. well. Let's just leave that there for a second. <laughs> Once again, if we look at our puddle size, we're after 2% hardener. So we've got a good sort of four inch puddle there. Um, once again, edge to edge. There's that blue hard the product. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. Mixing that. What we we'll do is we'll apply this onto this piece of sheet steel here. That because I think for most of your application you're going directly onto yes, a especially braided, yeah, yeah, mild steel or low carbon steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For after, <coughs> uh, I mean, ideal for after welds, for instance, mm. smoothing off uh, any tailgates, blending wings together, so on and so forth. You want a product to go over those welds. You know, I mean, you can get it fully bob on, but you still run the risk of shrinkage. You still run the risk of cracking on those areas. And you need something that's going to cover your ass. Yep. You want strength, you, you want rigidity, but you want give as well. You've got it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard combination to get, and a lot of companies have that's failed. Because you're not been looking in the right place. Well, do you know what I mean? We uh, we all knew about Evercoat, but it, no, you know, it was it was difficult for the UK. It's difficult to get a lot of the US brands in the UK because a lot of people don't think outside the box. Absolutely. You know, they're happy to be stuck in their ways from 1990. Well, we're certainly not a company that's interested in producing a product that's going to be a couple of pence or a pound cheaper than the one you was using yesterday. No. Nope. We're looking at offering you other alternatives. We're looking to offer you process time, reducing your process, reducing the amount of, of, of consumables that you use, the amount of abrasives. Yeah. Reducing the work area, reducing the work area will always reduce the amount of materials that you need. You got it. So this is the bit you don't like, Matt. You don't like applying this stuff. No. Okay. Oh, if you, you were to talk, talk, oh, mate, if you were to apply what we use on something like that, Mm-hmm. It would drag all over the place. It would not want to stay still. Right. Once again, to ensure maximum adhesion, okay, and minimal amount of pinholes, application is just like when we applied, we applied the Rage Ultra. A small amount of product, and we work it over the area. You notice I'm applying it, removing it, applying it, removing it. And what I'm doing is wetting out. I'm ensuring that scratch pattern where we've abraded the steel is going to give me maximum adhesion. Now, how do you think this stuff applies? Jesus Christ, superstar. I cannot get over how these products are applying. Wow! And this is on bare steel. There's nothing on this. This is this is this is pure bare steel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know we have a lot of that lying around the shop. So you said that with fibre paste, you, you're not too happy about obviously getting the product out and mixing it. You're not over keen about the application. No, because it's dry. And you don't like the tackiness and the sanding. Yes. So at the moment, so far as far as mixing application is concerned, you have. Uh, I think I've got your one, haven't you I? You have, mate. You have. I've. I've 
so buying the bears for this. <laughs> look at that, look at... So we'll leave that to kill. Oh. Below we'll leave way. a couple of little ridges in there because what, the good thing about the little ridges and the demonstrations is you can Sand see the sanding. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Let's have a little look. <laughs> Once again, same technique. Apply no, no pressure to the block. Oh, so yes, oh, 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 oh. No Here's way. The ridge that we left in it here, so you yeah. can see. Oh my God, man. Okay, that is some that is some hashtag BSC madness shit right, right there. Think, you know, I'm not pushing on the block, putting any excessive weight on there. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, that's that, that's some good shit. It will sound very, very well, <laughs> as you recommend, you know, with a sander and a PA disc. But when it comes down to it, and you want that fine, fine little bit of shaping that you need to do by hand, at least you know you're working with a product that you can sand by hand. And this stuff would be ideal over like welded areas and whatnot? Yep, yeah, like we were talking about earlier, talking about wanting to cap your welds off with a fiber yeah. reinforced paste, this would be the ideal one. The, the main reason, once again, is, is you're going to make such a good job of applying it, you're going to minimise the amount of sand that you need to do afterwards. Yeah. It is, it, I mean, it's so your application awesome. in this instance, your, just your method of application will reduce the amount of labour you've got to put into it and the amount of products and the amount of abrasives you're going to need to use not, to sand it's not, it. It's not doing anything, you know I mean? It's just, it's, it's the, this is what you would eventually get to with another product. You and would then, do, yes, yeah, absolutely. And then that's when you can start sanding. Mm. But, Jesus Christ, I am blown away. Wow. Wow, I am really blown away on that. I was going to say, 120 grit. Obviously, with a P80, I'll be removing the material much faster. Yes, yes. Well, but what I'm trying to do is just work on a small area here where we can get a good finish. So I can show you what the potential surface finish is of this filler as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, I am, like I said, blown away. This Avocote stuff is... What, I mean, what would you put on top of this as well? What would, would it be the Rage Ultra? Um, you could use Rage Ultra. Probably for this product, for the application that you're going to be using it in, I would probably recommend something like Easy Sand. Yep. If you want extreme flexibility, it's been Polyflex. So both flow grade products that are laid down very, very smooth, give you an almost sand free finish where you literally are going to just tickle the surface. Jesus Christ. The in thing fact, let's do that. The thing that dreams let's are made of. one of those products over the top of this. The things that dreams are made of, my friend. That's what it is. We'll keep half sanded, half unsanded, and we'll finish it off with a bit of Polyflex. Ready, game on. Thank you.